Are you serious? Are you serious, folks? We're inside the newsroom here, control room. We're actually working on today's broadcast. It's going to start at 12 noon Eastern. It's got a powerful program for you. Uh, but uh, China's flexing its muscles. So's Iran. We'll tell you all about that. And Mueller, the Mueller testimony is becoming a disaster. But besides that, uh, and, and the fact that there's a new prime minister in the UK, plus I've got unbelievable information coming out of the Arctic. It's an apocalypse. We'll tell you about that tonight in, in today's broadcast at 12 noon Eastern. But China has warned the United States and its allies, I repeat, China has warned the United States and its allies on regional security, about Taiwan specifically. Defense white paper outlines that China military plans amid competing claims over territory, including the South China Sea. The China has accused the United States and its allies of undermining global strategic stability by deepening their military presence and expanding their alliances with Beijing, also warning that it, will, it was ready for war if there was a move toward Taiwan's independence. The declarations today came as Chinese Defense Ministry outlined plans for further modernization of its armed forces. In, quote, international strategic competition is on the rise, the ministry said in a white paper, which is the first since 2012 and offers a very rare insight into China's military strategy and the workings of the world's largest military force. Accusing the United States of adopting unilateral policies, it said Washington, quote, has provoked and intensified competition among major countries, significantly increased its defense expenditure, pushed for additional capacity in nuclear, outer space, cyber, and missile defense, and undermined global strategic stability. In other words, the United States is building its military up to the, a level that's never been seen before under President Donald J. Trump. The white paper also reflected in the realities of the ground in China. Victor Gaio, director at the China National Association of International Studies, told Al Jazeera News. He said, quote, it emphasizes that China and the Chinese defense is very much self-defensed in nature and does not constitute a threat to any neighboring country or any other country in the world. The strategy is released a day after China carried out its first joint air patrol with Russia, triggering protests in both South Korea and Japan that their airspace in an area where both have territorial claims had been violated. Both countries scrambled jets to intercept the mission. Boy, this is a whole different story than yesterday, isn't it? There was no planned uh, joint mission going on. But boy, one day later, the spin is that it was a joint mission by the Russians and the Chinese, and they accidentally got too close to the South Korean airspace. That's not the truth at all. Truth is, the Russians invaded South Korean airspace with two Tu-95 bombers and one reconnaissance plane, and when the South Koreans scrambled multiple F-16s, and fired over 20 flare warnings and 360 machine gun warning shots. The Chinese even scrambled planes and showed up to try to help the Russians uh, and came into South Korean airspace. Man, this story has really changed in 24 hours, uh, as it's being reported here by Al Jazeera News. Matter of fact, Al Jazeera's Wayne Hay in Beijing said that Chinese Defense Ministry responded to the questions on the patrol after the release of the white paper, saying that China had strictly observed international law and had not gone after any third country. It added the patrols would continue. China's defense spending, second only to the United States, is expected to increase by 7.5% this year. But of course, they can't seem to do much on that because of the tariff. 
that's been po- imposed upon the Chinese imports into the United States, which is thus bringing in billions of dollars of new revenue into the United States Treasury and depleting the Treasury of China. That's what this a whole reshift of trade is doing, strengthening the United States, not only economically by the President of the United States, but strengthening the U.S. military as well. It's strengthened, again, Trump is strengthening the U.S. economy while strengthening the U.S. military, while weakening the economy and the military of China. And with some of the sanctions on Russia and, the, uh, and with the production of oil in Texas, It's lowering the price of oil, affecting the revenue going into Russia, thus weakening the Russian economy and weakening Russia's military capabilities. A brilliant move, really, by the President of the United States. Meanwhile, he keeps the pressure on North Korea and the squeeze on Iran, which thus limits both of those nations' capability of striking the country's that are close to their borders, like Japan and South Korea. And in, 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 in as far as Iran's concerned, keeps Iran in a tight vice to where they won't be able to focus as much on the annihilation of Israel, but more on the uh, survival of their own regime. We'll be back with more current world events and how they relate to the biblical prophecies. You might say, how does that relate? Perfectly. It forces this Ezekiel 38 scenario right to the table. It even speaks to the kings of the east that will come over the Euphrates, which would be China, for sure, for sure, for sure, that you can read about in Revelation 16. So you have Ezekiel 38 with Iran, Russia, Turkey, and others coming over the border to attack Israel eventually. You have Iran boasting of wiping Israel off the face of the map. That's right out of the pages of the Bible in Psalms 83. And you have uh, China the kings of the east, getting ready to build a 200 million man army that will come over the Euphrates River into the Middle East for war in the final battle. That's in the Bible also in Revelation 16. So you're watching the strategically, you're watching the Bible play out right in front of your very eyes. We're going to stay on top of it, the current world events and how they relate to biblical prophecy. So you don't want to miss today's live broadcast at 12 noon Eastern. That's 12 noon Eastern at my website at www.publiclyprophecy.com and everywhere else that this broadcast will air, including live on this YouTube channel. I'll be back with more. Are you serious? Are you serious? Somebody make some coffee. Calm down. We need another pot of coffee because it's going to be powerful in this program. What? What?